If you were to ask any boy, seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, what, where do you want to be when you're 25, 30? Where do you want to be? They're going to say, big house, fast car, beautiful wife. That's what they're going to say. Every single one. And slowly, the programming of the Matrix beats this dream out of men. I will tell you a story about me. I don't know, you're not, probably not old enough, but there was a game called, before Fortnite, before it all existed, the huge game when I was in my late teens, early 20s, was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So I used to play that game. And what? And this is the advice. The advice is hang around with people who see things, people who, who have a good mindset. I was with my brother, and I was like, oh, Andrew, I just completed this round. It's 41 kills, one death. That's pretty cool. Andrew looks at me from the couch. I swear to God, looks over me and goes, yeah, Tristan, but it doesn't matter, does it? I don't know. It doesn't matter, does it? And I turned that game off. And I, I don't think I've ever spent more than 10 minutes playing a video game ever since that day. So hang around better people. You know, if you're wasting your life, if you're wasting your talents, leave that group of friends. Cut low quality people out of your life. And slowly, as you go out into the world and apply yourself at different things that are more useful, you'll probably find out that you're not as useless as you think. But I do get asked the question by young men a lot. And it's always about making money. You mean you, mean you want to get rich. Cool. Let me tell you something. Uh, first and foremost, almost no one ever gets gets rich. Uh, the internet will preach all this, oh, your time will come when the universe thinks it's right and all this. No, 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 no. Most people work their shitty job, live their shitty life, uh, live their shitty old age, and then they die. And most people never ever get, the, get rich. They never get to live like Sterling. And that's the reality for most people. So, well, first of all, understand that and get your ass into gear. Second of all, and my advice is, is non-advice. If you took a hundred people, a hundred millionaires at random and put them in this room and you asked all of them, how do you make a million dollars? You're going to get a hundred different answers. Elon Musk would say, I invented PayPal. And Jeff Bezos would say, I sold, the, I sold books online. Like you're not going to get a definitive answer. So what do you think? Not necessarily what do you enjoy? Do what you enjoy is because most of what you enjoy won't get you paid. What do you think you could be good at? Sit and analyze yourself. What do you think you could be good at? Ask yourself that. I don't know you. What are you good at? Uh, think about what you think you could do and answer the question to yourself. I can't tell you. And that's, that's my advice. Like, look where money is moving and stand in the way. Uh, I know a dude when I was trying to, I was trying to buy a part for my car. He was like, oh, I know someone. I know someone who, 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 who's got car parts will sell cheaper. He heard I had a problem. He heard I was going to spend money on a car part. He jumps in the middle, probably made himself a thousand dollars. I don't care how much he made. He saved me money. Look where money is moving and get in the middle. That, that's a good starting position. I never wanted to be a multimillionaire. Andrew once said to me, famously, Tristan, if we could just find a way to make like 50, 100 pounds a day from home, that would alleviate a lot of our problems. Start small, because as you climb the mountain and you reach where you wanted to reach, you realize that there are new mountains to climb. There are new mountains to climb for me right now. And I'm at a level that a lot of people can't even dream of getting to. But you see it. It opens new doors when you accomplish the goals that you're aiming for. And uh, it opens your eyes to what's possible from there. So don't think I want to be a multimillionaire. Think, okay, I want some financial independence. I want to work 20 hours at the fast food store instead of 40, but supplement my income from home. Okay, I've done that. Now I have more free time. Where do I go from here? I've reached that mountain. I've seen what's possible and aimed higher. That's it. So don't don't think how am I going to become a multimillionaire. Think of your short-term goals. Make sure your mother works less, buy yourself some nicer clothes, you know, live in a better apartment, and think of how you can make those things happen. And as you go up in value as a man, you'll learn a lot about yourself, and from then you could tackle bigger goals. Stop wasting your time. So I was 17, I was working at a fast food restaurant making sandwiches. Now, the internet didn't really exist as such, but looking back on it, it was part of my journey. And I regret nothing because I ended up where I am. So would I even go back and tell myself anything is the question. If I had to, um, it would be to to not burn so much of my time. Let's talk to the 17 year olds who are listening. You know, do you do you finish your job, come home, play video games, etc.? That's what I used to do when I was 17 a little bit. What I didn't do is come home and think, OK, let's let's work on something new. Let's try and build something. Let's start a, a YouTube channel. Let's start creating content instead of consuming content. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd tell myself to be a bit, little bit more proactive with my free time and not around so much. And being a gentleman is, is, is very, very important. There doesn't have to be a winner 
when you're going on a date with a woman and you're looking to sleep with her and she's looking to have a good time, you could both go home happy. Right. You really can. There are, you don't have to feel like you defeated her somehow or you tricked her somehow and she doesn't need to feel like she used you somehow. Right. You can have a wonderful evening. You're nice to her. You open the car doors. You know, you buy her a bouquet of flowers. You have dinner. You make love. You go home. She's happy. You're happy. It's down to you. It's personal accountability. And that's what a lot of guys want to throw out the window these days. It's like uh, failing in every business you've ever attempted and failing to make money and then yeah, blaming yeah, yeah, capitalism yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or failing in uh, failing in uh, every boxing match or every American football game and NFL right. game you've ever played and blaming the referees or right. blaming the rules. No, uh, it's personal accountability and it's personal responsibility. So I think a lot of these guys need to really, really look in the mirror as I do. And sometimes I look at myself and think, Tristan, okay, you're a little out of shape. Tristan, okay, uh, you know, you've been, you've been sleeping too much, you've been, you've been partying too hard, you've got bags under your eyes, you've been, you know, and, uh, you're letting yourself go a bit, right. and you have to keep yourself in check. You have to right. stay at the very top, and if you don't stay at your very top, you're not competitive anymore. Every single species on the whole planet is exactly the same. Every single female of every single species look at the, looks at the most competitive males and thinks, those are the ones I want to have my children. And women, human women, are exactly yeah. the same. So if you're not having the success with women that you want, don't go out there trying to blame women and don't go out there trying to change women. And what people don't want to hear is that to become Tristan Tate was a slow process of hard work that took me 15 years. And I'm still working on myself. I think the Tristan Tate in three or four years is going to be a much better version of who I am now. Right. Um, and what a lot of people want to do is, you know, blame their circumstances but they don't understand that i mean height aside you could change every circumstance about you you could change how handsome you are you could change how fit you are how strong you are how rich you are how smart you are i am very fortunate i i don't know what loneliness feels like and that's something that most men can't say and it's why me and my brother when we understood through meeting very good friends of ours who were married for 10 years felt alone ex-military guys who felt that sense of brotherhood and, and loyalty and companionship in the army or on their sports team, their their college baseball team, their fraternity, their their, their football team, and they lose it. Those are the guys who, t who opened my eyes to how special the relationship I have with my brother is. And that's what I try to tell the world as well. I don't know what loneliness feels like. You know, I was born in a very underprivileged family. I grew up r absolutely broke. Uh, I didn't have the best I wasn't dealt the best hand, but there was always an ace up my sleeve. So I don't know what that feels like. I've always had companionship. I've always had someone who had my back, someone to fight with me, someone to work with me in terms of my brother. So I'm not going to sit here and say that the, that the journey to the top for me necessarily was lonely. But let me tell the young men out there, you need to be able to identify low quality friends and cut them off and curate the people around you into a group of winners a group of men who want to go out there and achieve the same things as you and the journey to the top not only won't be lonely but it will be far easier